Once again, thank you for joining me for our first episode of Office Hours with the Professor, episode one entitled Deep Search. So let's uh, go ahead and uh, give you some of the reasons why I thought it was important to uh, you know, have a, uh, a session like this. Uh, let me go in and make this full screen. All right, so today's uh, agenda, we'll, we'll actually talk about you know, what deep search means here inside of the system. And we'll, we'll reel it back just a little bit, talk about documents, workspaces, and versions, and, and really get into detail what that means, how to use the document in the most efficient way because it's quite powerful. Then we'll talk about actually searching for things within your designs and setting up your documents for the best search strategies. Uh, we'll also talk about some own, your own personal organization document strategies that you can use here uh, in the system, which are things that I use every day to keep myself uh, organized and uh, managed. And then we'll open it up to any kind of Q&A, um, open questions toward the end uh, of the session. All right, so the first thing you'll notice when you jump in on Shape is that it you're not logging into the CAD system, right? If I were to you know, move this out of the way and go to cad.onshape.com and sign in with my account here. I'll sign in as a, uh, my demo account here is uh, Onshape Design Plus Manager. And you'll see the first thing you notice when you start using Onshape is a document management system. Um, you're not seeing the CAD system up front, and that's quite on purpose. You know, we really built this as a data management system with an awesome CAD uh, system behind it. You know, that was uh, our thinking uh, when we put this together. And you'll see, um, you know, a list of documents, a, a Google style search box at the top of the screen, and ways to organize uh, your information either by company, and we'll get into what that means, by team, and by label. For example, I can find all the documents that are purchased because I put a label on it uh, in the system and then you can search within here. So I'll, I'll talk about all this as we go through uh, today's webcast. So back to the presentation. So on the documents page, as I pointed out at the top of the screen, there is that search box. And that search box um, allows you to search for the names of documents at the top level, but it also allows you to dive deep within the document uh, to locate and find anything um, that is stored inside of that document, whether it be a part, assembly, drawing, a photo, a video, uh, an app of some cor some sort. So it's, it's all there uh, in the search box and we'll get into how to best utilize that. So let's, let's first of all, reel things back just a tad. What is a document, right? I mean, I, I like this uh, image right here because it kind of shows, you know, what a document really is in Onshape. It, it's a, you know, you have all the, the, the things that go along with a particular design. It's not, uh, you know, you wouldn't want to create one document to document a, uh, the full design for a Boeing 787 Dreamliner, right? That would be too much stuff in one kind of folder, right? It, it would remind me of, of George Costanza and his wallet. Uh, you know, if, if you remember the old uh, Seinfeld episode where <laughs> George has trouble back issues because he's sitting on his wallet and, uh, you know, it's completely overstuffed. With, uh, with everything he might possibly need in that one place and uh, not really organized uh, well. And you know what happens toward the end of the episode. and uh, he, he <laughs> It's just a mess. Um, this is something else you also want to avoid, right? You know, when we designed our data management systems over the years, we thought of it as a, you know, a file cabinet with uh, manila folders inside of it. And those manila folders had uh, papers inside of them. Um, you know, so you wanted to have a good organizational strategy in a file cabinet way, but we, we're living in a database world now where things can be cross-referenced very easily. So you want to consider that when uh, putting your document structure together in Onshape. In fact, you also want to think about how you share documents with other people inside of your uh, organization or outside if you're sharing with customers or vendors. Because if you take that folder out of this file cabinet, a folder represents an on-shape document. If you share that entire folder with somebody, they're getting everything inside that document. 
So you want to be judicious in how you uh, manage and, and put your designs together. So to come back to what a document is inside of Onshape, we have a place to store items related to a particular design. And I'll walk through a very, very simple product design process um, in how you would best use an Onshape document and why you'd want to have more than one document for certain things. Okay, but remember, you can store almost anything inside of a document, which is why it's easy to get into trouble because you want to store everything possible under the sun. So you just got to think about it a little bit, and hopefully after this webinar, you'll see um, what I mean by that. So let's go into that. So before we get into search, we need to figure out what we can search on. So let me go back into my Onshape system here, and I have my uh, top-level system. You'll notice that I have various parts. I have this coffee grinder. I have a separate part, a blade, that goes inside of the coffee grinder. And I also have various other components, the electrical components, maybe some consumer product surfacing type examples that are going to go into it in the library. Uh, so how do we start a design, right, non-shape thinking about the strategy and structure, right? So I'll create this new document, which is very much like that manila folder. Um, I might not know at this point in time what the name of my design is because it's early on in a design process. So all I'm going to do is call it the new idea that I have and then go in and perhaps add some attachments and information uh, to this document that helps me understand and describe what this is. Before I do that though, I'm a stickler for having proper version uh, control and branching, more of the Git flow style version management style. And uh, that's how I do all of my uh, documents inside of Onshape. The next episode, episode two of our series on uh, with the, the professor here is going to talk about how you actually set up Onshape in detail with this Git flow management process. So don't worry if you, um, you know, see me doing something here that I haven't explained too deeply yet. What I like to do is just set my main branch to be the what I call the quote unquote release branch. And then I create immediately from the start of my timeline, a branch called dev. And that's where I actually do all of my work. Very similar to how software programming uh, is done and, and how you would use a system like GitHub uh, to, to work. Um, but this dev branch is really where I do all my work and then I push it to release after I'm uh, officially ready to, to give it the blessing. Um, so now I'm gonna insert that information related to my design first. Um, and I have a photo of my kitchen, so I'll just go in. I'm using a MacBook here, so here's my file manager, the finder. And I'll go to my images, and I have this photo of my kitchen that I've taken earlier. You notice it's uploading kitchen.jpg right here. It adds it to my document as a tab inside of my document. And I might even rename that and, and call this the idea for the new grinder. I can spell. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Idea for grinder. So the reason why it's important that you name that is because it, you're going to have the ability to search for it. If I were to go back to my Onshape main document screen, you see it's up here in the corner. If I hold the command key on Mac or control in Windows, it'll open up a new tab inside of your uh, browser here and you see the new ideas here. And if I wanted to, I could actually search right now for something called uh, idea uh, for grinder, right? I could actually hit this search right here and search for a document with the name idea for grinder. My goodness, let me cancel that. <laughs> All right, idea. I'm just going to search that, and you see what, what it does is it finds something called idea. And it, it goes right in and, and tells me that uh, right here. And I could also enter a descriptive uh, search as well uh, in the system. So back here, let's go in and you, you know, I'm actually going to draw up this shape right here uh, very quickly. I'm not going to talk about how to do the actual CAD work behind the scenes, but I'll just go back here, construct something five by four. And I'm going to drop in a spline for the stylistic shape. 
and I'm going to take these elements and begin to construct them as uh, construction elements and use this as a scaffolding uh, to hold my spline into place the way I want. And then off my top plane, I'll just offset a quick plane, call it six inches. Now I'm going to call that the cover plane because that's where the cover of my coffee grinder is going to live eventually later. All right, and then I'm going to take this cover plane sketch on that and then offset this shape by uh, some amount. You can drag it just like so, and I'll call that 3 eighths of an inch. I'll just type in 3 eighths. And I'll use the most powerful command I know, convert entities or use, and there we are, just trim that. You know, I don't even need to trim it. And I'll create a lock just to get that shape in place. So I'll just say normal to the profile at one and a half magnitude. We looked at from the front, you'll actually see that kind of pop in the place like that and round off these corners with some nice uh, fillet radii. All right, so we have this shape. I like this so far. I'm gonna set this as a named version in my dev scheme here. We'll call it 0, .0. So, or 0 0.1, I should say. So this is how I'm doing my version management scheme on the dev branch. Once again, next month's uh, webcast, we'll talk in great detail about this, but I, I bring this up now because you can set properties that are related to versions and workspaces. So a version is a named point in time that you can set in your design that you, is a major milestone that you can refer to. Um, and you also have the ability to create version specific properties. So as soon as I hit 0 0.1, instead of hitting create, I'm going to hit create version and edit properties. So it brings me to the data card of this design. And in here, You'll notice I have the part studio, part one, the idea for the grinder. You, know, you can actually give it a description, photo from my kitchen. And that's something you can search for. I can go to this part right here. Um, you notice that I can give it a, a description right here. I haven't given it a name yet. I could give it part number, revision, and state information, which we'll get into as well as some other properties that you can set up um, that are uh, your own company specific properties. So probably another topic for a future episode. But I like this so far. I have the, the part description and the photo description set. And that's something that I could search on uh, straight away. But there's also, so besides version specific properties, there are also um, workspace properties. So the closed circle over here, if we zoom in and look at our version manager, the closed circle means or the filled circle means that it's a version, a name state that you can't change. But the open circle means that these are open workspaces like a work in progress. And you can go in and also edit the properties of a workspace as well in the same way. Um, so you notice I get the dev workspace properties and you know this information can be stored uh, as well, you know, revisions um, and things like that, but not state because the state um, is a special property that belongs only to versions. You don't want to set a state on something that's an open work in progress, right? So it's always going to be in progress, per, you know, in this case, as you can see. All right. So I have that, and I'll just go in and make some, some more edits to this. Um, yeah, I'm, gonna, yeah, I'm not going into a full demonstration of CAD, but I just want it to look moderately uh, realistic. So I'll just give it some style on the side. We'll uh, split this up right here. Split these faces, bang, with that curve all the way around so we get this nice shape. I'll use our direct editing tools to offset these surfaces about uh, by a small amount. Give it some, uh, some definition here like that. So that looks good. And uh, I'm also going to insert a... Um, a surface that I have from another uh, design. So to do that, I'm going to use my uh, derive tool to browse my document scheme, not the current document, but the other document. And I remember I had that cover right here, which I could actually search for the name for the cover in that search box and searching the name of the document, right? So that, as you can see, my naming scheme for my documents that I set up for my company called Agile Design Inc. I have library dash, you know, 400,001, 
dash cover. And that's just a very simple way to set up your, your document naming system to um, be you know, something that's easy to find documents later on. And of course, here are the contents of that document, the Cover Part Studio, and the surface that lives inside of that Cover Part Studio. So I'll drop that in, and there it is. And I'll use some more direct modeling tools to um, you know, match the surface by using the Place Face tool. I'm gonna to take that surface and replace it here. All right. And I don't need that surface anymore, I'll delete that. And I'm gonna use that Cover Plane to split it up. So don't. Don't worry too much about what I'm doing here for CAD. That's not really the main goal of this. I just want to show a, a traditional design process or a typical design process using uh, Onshape. So now I have two parts, okay? Of course, I have part two, which I just created in the parts list down here in the corner. So it's like the master model technique. If you're familiar with uh, Creo or SolidWorks, this is a similar process, but it's all in one part studio. And I'm going to rename that and call that the base. And I'm going to rename this, which you could also rename under the properties as well. So I can call that the, uh, uh, actually, this is the, uh, the base right here. So let me just rename that, call it the cover, and then go here. I'll do it in the properties this time and call this the base. Of course, I could set descriptions just for that item as well. And I could even give it part number information at this point in time. I don't need a revision yet. It's not a released item. Um, but as you can see, I can set those properties up right there uh, as I'm working. And then I could even go back to this one and go to the part number properties here and set the, that up as well. So those properties are now available to actually search on at the top level of the system. If I go back to my main screen here, you notice you can keep multiple tabs open. I generally keep a documents tab open just for general searches at the top level, and then I have my document open in another tab and any other reference documents open. And here I'm gonna set my search to search the company, all documents that belong to the company or created by me. So you just set the scope of the search the way you want. And you notice it's now searching and created by me. And I could actually search for a part and the part description could contain coffee. And now it's gonna search my workspaces for that. And see that? I find the cover and the base inside of this document called New Idea, okay? All right, so good, good. Let's go back here now, and we'll get into more searching uh, as we go forward, but we have base, we have cover. I'm gonna hit the, uh, the fillet right here, add that fillet radius set the cover material properties. Oh, I don't want to delete it. We uh, edit the appearance of this just to make it a little transparent. So we have all this information right here. And this is the basic consumer product design shape uh, of this so far, which I want to set as a, uh, a version in time here. Maybe we'll call it 0 0.2 in our version list right here. So that way you can see what's going on. By the way, if you go back to the main screen here, I'll just click the corner. Here's my new idea. I can right click on this and choose the versions and history button. And this versions and history button will actually show me in a larger screen, you know, the entire history of this in all branches and in the active branch uh, as well. So it's looking just the dev and here's all branches. All right, so I'll just go back to the new idea document itself and we're gonna start putting together the assembly. One more thing I need to do, but just before that, is just offset this cover plane again, uh, down by an inch, maybe you know, three quarters, something like that. And I'm gonna split, well, I'm not gonna bother with that, I'm just gonna to go to the next part. I, I don't wanna to spend too much time modeling. I'm gonna go right to the assembly. So this is where you wanna make some decisions, right? When you get an on-shape document, you have a part studio document, you have an assembly document, 
you want to decide whether you want uh, separate documents altogether for your part studios and assemblies and drawings. So, you know, in this case, it's a very small kind of consumer product design, right? It's it, it doesn't require a lot of uh, you know, we're, we're probably sharing this with the same people. There's probably not a lot of uh, areas of the design that are going to be farmed out to different subcontractors. So I'm comfortable with leaving the, the part studio and the assembly together because when you share something to somebody, right, by hitting the share button, I'm not going to um, be too worried about sharing just pieces of it out because when you share, you're sharing the entire document. Like if I shared that to Ed, gave him view rights to this, view and export, you know, he's getting the whole thing. He's getting the photo, the assembly, and the part studio. So just keep that in mind when you're putting together the structure of your documents. If you feel like, you know, creating a drawing and sending that out to a supplier separate from the actual original design, you might consider creating separate documents for each item. And I'll get into that um, when I create the drawing of this going forward. Um, so I have this part studio here. You know, sometimes I... Uh, I just keep it the name of Part Studio One, but these can also be renamed so that way you can search uh, for items. So I'm going to say Coffee Master Model. And I'm going to rename this and call this the Coffee Assembly. Okay. And that way you can search on it you know, properly as well because you can search for Part Studio names as well as parts that are in those Part Studios like I did earlier. All right, so let's go to the coffee assembly. We'll insert these items here. I'm going to take the base and the cover. Just drop those in place because they were you know, already kind of in place already. We'll just fix this in space so it doesn't float away. And I'll, uh, I don't care about the cover just yet. Um, actually, let me hide the cover. I want to drop in a, another part from another place, and I just realized before I do this, I really do want to hollow this out before I start dropping motors and other uh, parts here into my design. Um, so what I'm going to do is actually do the split using this offset of the cover plane. So I'll take this part here, split it with this, there we are, and that gives me the opportunity to... Uh, shell out just certain regions of this. I can shell out that and that separately, so that way I get this kind of intersection um, here, uh, and then I can go back and unite these items back together. And because I just did that body operation, it renamed these parts automatically, so I just need to go back and set that as the, uh, the base right there and just make sure that my properties are still intact and it looks like it did absorb those properties, so it, it did a good job there. So I have this uh, up to date. I have my base and the cover up to date in the assembly. And now we'll insert a library component. So this is where in Onshape, right, you have um, you know, the ability to insert parts from not only the single part studio, but from other documents altogether. And this is where you're gonna pull from libraries. So you know, if I'm interested in looking for a, uh, a part that I know is a purchased item, um, or in my company or under review, you know, there are different ways you can set um, your organizational structure to make this all work very nicely. So if I go back to my main screen, you remember I had this label called purchased and I put my motor in that purchased section here. Let's say I have this blade and it's also a purchased blade. I'll do this and explain it and then do it again. So I'm going to drag and drop the blade onto the purchased label. So these are for your you know, own personal management, right? This is not company-wide folders that you can share. Nobody else is going to see that this is a purchased item by doing this. It's just for your own personal account as Mike the manager that I've logged in as. But um, you know, there are other ways of sharing things that would make it more company-wide. And by the way, we're not done yet at Onshape. There's obviously going to be more things to come with data organization strategies that will be company-wide that I can't get into right now, but uh, we are thinking about these things right now. So this is just my own way of personally setting things up so that I can find things the way I want. I can see that these are two purchased items here. 
you can create labels over here. So if I had my uh, to-do list, I could create a label for that. Just like that, and now it shows up over here. And if we go to my main screen, I can drag my new idea into the to-do list. You can also right-click on things and go to the labels and just pick a checkbox uh, in here as well. And things can belong to multiple labels too, right? See that? You can have things showing up in both places. So it's way better than folders in that case. Um, but here's all my purchase parts. I'm going to go back to my um, new idea document here, go to my purchased area, and see that I have my items waiting for me right here, and I'll put that motor in. And of course, I have an assembly of that that I'm going to drop in. You can see it dropped into place. I just have it set to go on the origin for the sake of a demonstration here. Uh, so I have that, and I'll insert my blade uh, as well. In this case, I'm just going to do a search for blade. So this is pretty important here. I don't want to search right here, because if I search for Blade, it's going to search everywhere, including all the public documents in the, in the free user database. So what you really want to do is set the scope of your search before you do any kind of search in this box. So I'm going to go to Agile Design Inc. and then search for Blade. right? And I can see the Blade comes in. You notice what's under that, though. If I zoom in a little bit with my mouse, there's a letter D under that. So that is the version of that blade. So there's the blade. It comes in. And you can see this button right here at the top shows me the, the version graph of uh, that blade, showing that we're inserting revision D uh, of that document uh, here in the system. So I'll do that again. Other documents, Agile Design, type in blade. There we are. And I'll set the version that I want. It always defaults to the latest version. By the way, you're never going to an open work in progress of a part that comes from a different document. It's always a named version for safety reasons. You don't want to have things updating without your knowledge um, where parts are being used all throughout your system. So this named version keeps things nice and safe and, and secure. And I just hit cancel there, so let me just search for it again. Lead. Rev D, drop it in. I'll just go ahead and mate it. Let me just fix this motor in place. I don't need to mate it in place. And I'll drop this in um, so that I can just snap it into place. I'll just use the fasten mate. Zoom on in there, find the center, and we'll find the midpoint of that right there. Actually, it needs to be offset a little bit. I'm not going to worry too much about that. And now I can see that spins around. All right. So I'm at the next point now where I want to set this as a major milestone in the design. It's 0 0.3. I'm not going to edit any properties because I'm not ready to release anything. Um, so I'll just go ahead and, and create that right there. So we, we have that um, set to go. We'll make a uh, drawing of this in a moment after I do release it. So to release this, and this is what I talked about for my next webcast next month, we'll talk about this Git flow style management scheme and all the details related to it. But I'm going to go back to my um, release section here. And I'm going to merge from dev to released. And I'm doing that as the project manager here. So I'll just merge that into the current workspace from dev into release, the current space, as you can see right here. And you'll see all the new tabs pop in. And I'll set this as revision A now. So I'll hit A, create the version properties at this point in time. So I can go in and drill in. There's the coffee master model, cover, base, and the idea, and the assembly. So you see it's already remembering the part numbers, right, and the descriptions. Maybe I want to set the revision in the state now. And by the way, you can hold the shift key and actually select multiple parts once, hold the control key to pick the assembly. So that way I'm able to release all of these items at once. So I'm going to release these at Rev A. I'm going to set these as released. I'll hit apply. I can go back to the coffee grinder itself. Looks like I didn't get the assembly there. So let me just do that. Release that. 
I'm also going to set the part number uh, for that. There we are. And I'll just copy and paste from here for the description, coffee grinder assembly. Save that, and now that's part of the release. And now I can actually search uh, for those and create reports. So let's go back to my slideshow just for a second here. And remember what we can search on, right? We have things that are document names or part studio names we can search on. We can search for part numbers now within the system. So if I wanted to search for that part number for um, one of these items, right? If we go back into the properties uh, in here, just to re remind myself of what I named the, uh, the part number, there's the base, there's the part number, right? So if I go back to my documents page, I can do a search under the company and I will search for the part and the part number is that, and I'll search for it at any state. And look, there it is. So it's it's finding that base, and it sees over here in the corner that the part number is ON 100002-11. Okay. Now, if you want the rest of the company, your company, in case my company here called Agile Design Inc. to see these documents, they still can't see these even though I've released them, right? So if I go into this, you know, back to my new idea, and by the way, I should probably rename this document to an actual um, thing that makes sense. Like that, not a coffee, but a coffee grinder. Wow, there we are. Rename that. So, of course, that shows up immediately no matter where else this is showing up for everybody. But I want to share this design. And right now, only Ed would have been able to see this in my company. By the way, if I go to my company properties under here, under my account, I have a company called Agile Design Inc. I have 25 users that belong to the company. And you can see here are the users who are part of it. So Mike is an admin. And so is this other user that created the account is the owner. Um, I created an administrator account um, for billing purposes and general administration. And then I have Mike, the manager, who also has admin rights. So the only people that could actually see this design right now in my company called Agile Design Inc. is Mike, Ed, because I gave him the view rights, and the administrator. So to share this now with the rest of the company, what you want to do is share it with the actual company. Even though the company owns the document, the, the rest of the company users can't see it right now. So you wanna share it, and you can share it from within the document like I was here, or you could even share it after the fact. You could just you know, hit the share button from here and get to it as well. So either way works. But you see you have individual teams and companies, so I'll share it to the company, Agile Design Inc., view only, and comment and now that would be available for anybody else to look at. So let's test that. I'll sign out. And I'll sign in as the electrical engineer. And I can see it Agile Design Inc. The, the new document modified at 1.35 p.m. today. The release of that shows up for Mike to uh, look at. Or I'm sorry, Emily to look at in this case. Um, so let me just log back in. And of course, Emily could search for things that are now uh, in the system as well. So let's go through these. So document name. Actually, I want to search for all. So if I want to search for the name of that photo, there was a question in the, in the panel here um, relating to searching for the name of that photo. When I, when I was searching earlier for document, that's only searching for the document name. But if you want to search for uh, an item in the document with a certain name, uh, photo kitchen. Spell it right. <laughs> and I remember I actually put this uh, in the description. You no, 
know what? I might have not put it in the description. <laughs> Let me skip that. I'll come back to that if I can. But here I want to search for all of my drawings that are released as a version in the system. So that's a quite powerful search right there, right? This is like higher end kind of functionality for a system. So I'm going to say search and look what it does. Just like that, we have all of the documents here in the system that are released as drawings. So I didn't show you how to make a drawing yet and go through the release process of a drawing. So let's do that now. And then we'll kind of go through and open this up for more Q&A uh, before we run out of time. I wanted to have at least 10, 15 minutes or so for, for Q&A um, for you guys. So let me go back here. I'm going to go back to logging in as uh, Mike, the manager. I'm going to go back and create a brand new drawing. So I could have created a drawing inside of that coffee grinder document, right? But I'm going to do it separately. And the reason is, is because I want to share this drawing with somebody on the outside, but I don't necessarily want them to have access to the models themselves. So let's do this. I'm going to say what the name of this drawing should be. ON-100002-11, I'll call it, for the name of the base owned by the company. And it, of course, gives you your standard templates here um, in the design. But um, in this particular case, you know, let me do my thing that I normally do here, just setting this as the release branch. I'm not going to go through the whole dev process on this one, because I'm just making a drawing of something that already exists. I'll delete the part studio. I'll create a brand new drawing. And I'm going to use my own standard template here that I've created for myself, a B-size drawing. So if you used any other systems like a SolidWorks or something where there's a separate drawing file, SLDDRW, you know, this is kind of like that workflow, right, where you're creating a separate drawing file, essentially. Um, but in this case, we're, you know, we're doing it because we want to set the sharing uh, properly. So I want to make a drawing of something that already exists at a particular released state. Right? I'm, making, I'm making my documentation related to that release design. Um, so I can go into my company. There's the coffee grinder. Here's the base. Now I'm going to pick the, uh, the front view uh, of that, just like so. And of course, I can make my uh, other views, you know, isometric, side views. Just kind of go up at an angle there to get the isometric. Make it shaded so it looks kind of nice. In fact, I really want this side view to be a uh, section view so I can see the wall thickness uh, inside of here and the cutout. Just drop in a couple dimensions to make this look proper. There we go. And you notice what happened here. Look what we have in the title block already, right? We have who drew it. I didn't go through a checked and approved uh, property um, yet, but that's something that could be added. And then you also have the description, part number, and the revision, most importantly, shows up in the corner instamatically, automatic, automatically, because these are related to the properties. Now you notice how I've set up my, uh, my template here. I can't actually click on it and show you the property names because I've locked them. Uh, you can go to the wrench here now. And this shows the properties, and you can see I've locked my format. But if I unlock it temporarily, just like going to edit sheet format mode in something like SolidWorks, now I can actually touch the things inside of my template. And if I double click here, you can see that this is actually calling out a property. If I hover over it, it's showing sheet reference part number. Uh, if I go over here, sheet, sheet reference uh, description. And uh, that's coming essentially a sheet reference property back to the model. So you can actually drop in, you know, if I'll just drop in a note, let me lock my format again. So if I wanted do not scale the drawing, and I'm going to go in here, and I can drop in a property uh, of the description, and it shows right up in there. It, it will wrap, which is really nice if you drag the corners. But we'll just drop that back in here. So that's calling out that uh, parametrically linked uh, thing back to the 
um, name of that original part. So forget about files and folders, guys. I mean, we don't. We, we didn't. When we first started this design for the coffee grinder, we didn't create an assembly document or a part file for each of these items. It, it looked like a body inside of that one part studio, but those bodies are full first class citizens that you can use now, not only in drawings, but things like uh, open bomb, you know, to create build materials. Um, all that, it, all those parts are real life parts. Uh, they're real items, uh, much like that would be a separate part file in another CAD system that you've come to know. All right, so now let me just release this drawing by, uh, you know, I'm just going to call it Rev A as well, just to keep it in line, and uh, go to the properties of that. Call out a description. And I call that out as part number as well. I, I really, I don't really have to do this, I don't think, because I'm searching for other things. But let's make, let's do it the right way. Rev A, release that. Drawn by mic manager shows up automatically. I'll show you where that comes into play. Now, of course, I could search for all of my drawings uh, here in the system by doing that search. Now, by the way. Let's say you always are looking for released drawings, which seems like a pretty common thing to do, right? Look what it does right here. See this search? This is really important. You see the drawing. You see there's Rev A of that drawing that I just made. I should have renamed the tab as well just to you can see it. It really doesn't matter that we can see the name showing up right here. But this page right here, when I do that search, this URL at the very top that I'm highlighting is now available for many different things. So if I want to save that as a bookmark, I hit the little star here at the end in Chrome, and I'm going to say uh, released drawings. And, you know, of course I have folders inside here. I'll just put it at the top of my bookmarks bar here. And you see there's the released drawings. And if I click on that, it will now always give me, just like that, a report for all of my release drawings that I can look at. Okay. Okay, so let's do this. I'm just going to take just a second here and take a look at the questions panel here. Um, just to make sure I haven't missed anything completely that somebody had a question on. I'm flying solo today. Nobody's uh, checking the messages for me. So um, I'll just go back here. I see a question here. Um, set up a system for part names that automatically meaning themselves according to revisions and updates. Now, we, we didn't miss that. So um, question from Justin here is saying that um, uh, the, the parts weren't named automatically. I went in and named those myself. You know, I named a revision myself based on my own company's revision scheme policies, and I um, set that accordingly. So that this is where we are today at Onshape. You know, perhaps, you know, I, I know we've had requests for this in, in the, you know, uh, in our development process to do some things in a more automatic way for renaming things based on uh, numbering conventions and revision conventions that are customizable. So that will come. Um, but they're not here right now. So this is the process of doing this uh, now. I, I kind of find this kind of way better than something like a Windows Explorer manual file management, um, but not quite as sophisticated as something like, you know, some of the other PDM systems out there that are doing more automatic things. So, you know, we, we have this on the roadmap to do. We just want to do it the right way without making it too complicated. Um, you know, we don't want to, you know, reduce, uh, we don't want to over, you know, give complexity to the system um, where, where it's not necessary, but um, we do plan on having that functionality. All right, let's do that. Let me go back to my presentation because I, I know I might have missed something here and then it will open it up to, to further questions. Um, so remember, Here's the search box where you can search in the different things. I've actually attached a handout uh, to this. 
um, presentation. There's one thing I want to do. I just want to run a quick poll, and then we'll open it up for questions. And if you have questions now, feel free to start typing them in um, after this poll uh, runs. But I'm going to launch this poll asking you how you currently uh, do a production um, search process at your own company. If you know, if indeed Onshape is not quite your production system yet, um, you know this is a, a question for that. And if if it is a your production system, thank you. But um, just kind of curious about that. So I'll uh, I'll let this go for about another thirty seconds, and I'm gonna just take a swig of water here. And I'll share these results in about 10 seconds. See the number is still changing. All right. All right. Good. Good enough. Good enough. I see a whole bunch of people have voted, so I'll stop the, uh, the poll. I'll share those results here. So hopefully you can see this on the screen. Um, if not, I'm just going to kind of read through it. But it looks like this is what I suspected. You know, most people are browsing uh, through files and folders, much like the Manila folder illustration, uh, looking at a network drive and just kind of browsing through a folder structure that's been set up. Um, you know, there are a certain percentage of people that are also searching using the search bar. You know, the search bar of like Windows, you know, you can set it up to kind of, you know, do some kind of automation to, to you know, kind of index it ahead of time, but I, I don't know how many people are actually using that. Funny, there's only 15% using uh, the search tools in a PDM or PLM system. Um, you know, anecdotally, I know not everybody has a PDM system. Um, you know, it's a, it's a luxury that only some people uh, have. All right, great. Well, thank you for sharing that, guys. I'll uh, close that uh, results page here. So, so really, some of the key takeaways I want you to, to take from this particular webcast um, as we uh, open it up for questions uh, is really to, you know, it, it's almost hard. You almost have to unlearn about the file and folder technique when you're coming to Onshape, right? Because it's such a database-driven approach, right? Everything is an object which has property data related to it. You can search for things based on any kind of standard information that you see in this search box right here, right? You also have the ability to create labels, for your own personal data organization at your particular, on your user account, but this is not company wide, right? These labels are very much like labels in your Gmail where you can set um, your own personal labeling system to find things on your own uh, uh, volition. And then finally, Think about your sharing process, right, and strategy. Like, who are you sharing with? This is how you should consider building out your documents so that when you share things, you're only sharing things uh, of, of that particular document. Because when you share a document, it shares the entire thing. And then finally, you know, if, if you're thinking about using Onshape as your production system, you should, you know, update your procedures. You know, we're here to help, of course, you know, just. Uh, if you have questions, you know, send an email to professor at onshape.com. Um, right here, you see there's a you know, link to that. Send an email to professor at onshape.com or, or tweet at me at onshapeprof. Um, I'm happy to give recommendations and get in touch. You know, I'm sure we can find you if you're an Onshape user. If you, if you let us know um, which email address uh, you use Onshape for, we, you know, um, or just give us your contact information uh, in a private message through uh, email. That would probably be the best way. And we can uh, help you design your new release process um, as you move forward uh, with Onshape. So let me, let me look at the questions. You know, feel free to uh, type in the questions box here. I'll just open the, uh, the questions panel so I can read it a little easier. All right, I see a few in here. Let me open it up separately. 
So if you share a document, does the recipient see labels? Uh, the labels are, as I mentioned just now, uh, they only show up in your browser on your account. Um, we are thinking of more company standard ways of doing labels, and that's coming in the, uh, the near future. Um, oh, search by tab name or file type. Really good. Thank you for bringing this up, Barton. This is um, a, a really uh, something I didn't think of adding to this webcast. But let me, let me show it to you, because this is another place where you can actually search um, within uh, the system. So if I go back in to my uh, drawing or my uh, document for the coffee grinder here, you have these tabs within the document. I have those three tabs, right? And actually, let me go to the one that's more complete, the finished one that I had earlier. Just like Julia Child, she always had a pre-baked, uh, fully uh, documented uh, item here. Um, so here you can search uh, within tabs. So this, this manager pops up in the lower corner, this tab manager. If you click that button or hit the tab, um, the tab key on your keyboard will let you tab through as you're in the tab manager. So if you want to search within tabs for tab names, you can also just say, I want to find the Rhino file that I dropped in uh, to this particular document, right? So that's um, how you can search within here. You can also filter by type. So here I can actually filter by geometry documents, by images. So it automatically builds these buttons based on what document uh, has. In fact, let me sign out of this account and sign in as a uh, my other kind of on shape account. Let me just uh, sign in there. So if we go into uh, this particular one, you know, this one has a, a lot more stuff in it. So you see the photo here. There's a top assembly. Um, you know, we have the uh, a rendering in here. We have the, the bill of materials, uh, I believe, in this one. Do I have the bottom in this one? It doesn't look like I have the bottom in this one. Uh, but you can actually search that. Let me just search one that, that has a bomb in it. Yeah, I think this one has bomb. Yeah. So as you can see, I have all these folders set up in my tab manager here, so you can group thing. So this is more of the Costanza style document where I'm stuffing everything in it. Um, because, you know, it was a single project that was self, you know, self-contained, but I have all the drawings of each item in here. I have uh, the bill of materials um, in here. So you can set the bill of materials names in here and, and search for them. So I can say, find all the bombs uh, in here. Um, these happen to be, uh, uh, the open bomb. Uh, actually, that's my internal bomb, but you can also set it to go to the open bomb system as well. Um, so yeah, you can search those tabs. Um, yeah, so I see the comment about uh, company-wide labels. So that is uh, something we are considering, we're not considering, but acting on right now. So can't tell you when uh, and how it's going to be implemented, but um, know that that is something that we are working on right right now. Uh, from from the main item top, you know, search here. It's it's searching pretty much everything. Um, it's not going to search for any kind of folder names inside of uh, documents. I think that's a question that's in here as well. But uh, pretty much anything else that's in the document at any branch or any version, you can work uh, search for. So you can you know search for workspaces and versions, just workspaces, just versions. These results can be stored, um, so that way you can kind of hone down on a uh, search result. Oh, good question here. Next question is, a: uh, can I move a part from an existing assembly into its own document? So as long as it's its own tab, you can. So if I were to go into that conveyor again, you notice I have a layout, which is just the, the basic framework for a design, almost like a skeleton model. And then I actually have the, the next tab is, you know, it's using that frame 
uh, inside of this particular document. So I could take this frame and move it out to another document altogether, right? So you say move the document, and it's going to move the things that it needs to relate to it, right? So it, in this case, it's going to move out the layout and the frame, the standard frame tab, but it doesn't need to move out the assembly or any other part studios that are in the document. So if you do want to go from the Costanza wallet to the you know more slim wallet, um, but have multiple wallets, then this is the method. So you just, um, let me do that again. You just right click down here in the tab and you'd say move the document and you get to pick existing documents that are, might already exist. So I could go into my company here and move it to this other document. It will actually create a new version of that document on the fly when you do that. Or you can go to a brand new document and I'll just call this frame you know, give it a number, O-N dash, there, and then you say move. And now those tabs will be uh, pulled from this document. And now it's moving it to a completely private uh, document. You can see it's going to be uh, in here right at the top. Um, so this, this series will be at least monthly, so this is episode one. So we'll, uh, we'll have more of these style type sessions and uh, more of the business side of uh, how to, to use Onshape. So at least once a month is how I'm proposing it now. There might be other ways of disseminating this information by uh, other means. This has been recorded, so we'll, uh, everybody will get the recording and um, the document is also available in the uh, um, in the go to meeting control panel here on the side. There's a handout called "Where Are My Parts: A Primer on On Shape Search." So feel free to download that right now. It's in the handout section uh, of the system. So I am running up against another meeting. I actually have to dive out right now, parachute out of this meeting. I have another uh, meeting going on. Um, if I did miss any questions, um, it doesn't look like I have. Um, oh, here's one more question I think I might be able to get to. If I import a SOLIDWORKS assembly, how do I move a single part on its own? So if you open up a SOLIDWORKS assembly and it comes in as multiple tabs um, in there, right? So it, it will, let me just open up the conveyor to kind of demonstrate that I can't show it in real time, but um, this might be a good uh, future webcast topic for how to deal with imported data. But let's say this was a SOLIDWORKS uh, item in that part studio, you could derive it out. So you can move that out to its own document on its own um, by deriving it. Um, you know, but there, you know, it depends on how you import it. If you import it as a, uh, a flattened object or as a, a full object, everything kind of comes into its own thing. We are working on a couple of other things there uh, as well to make that easier, but that'll probably be a future topic we'll get to. All right, well, I got to run, guys. Thank you again, um, and I hope you enjoy. Michael is not an angel. You're no, I'm, I'm trying to get off of it. It's uh, going to be crashed as soon as I closed it. <laughs> How's it go, Michael? Very well.